All right, welcome back everybody. So in the April slash May timeframe of this year, I ended up brewing a Russian Imperial Stout with the intention of aging it uh, in secondary fermenters for about six or so months. Well, now six and a half months later, we are here today to actually taste it. And uh, I'm really, really excited to share this with you because it turned out to be a phenomenal beer. Because of the serious amount of time involved in doing something like this, I actually posted the brew day as a separate video. So if you want to check that out, there's going to be a card notification icon popping up in the corner here where you can see the video for that brew day. I'm going to apologize in advance for the terrible choice of music that I put into that video. I'm sorry. So I did do a bit of an experiment where I freshly bottled some right after fermentation was complete and then I put the rest in the secondary fermenter. I did end up drinking all the bottles uh, before it was time to put the uh, secondary fermented beer into the keg, which is basically the reason and the point of putting them in the secondary fermenters. Um, but I did notice an interesting thing where the uh, roastiness and the acrid sharp flavors that come from uh, the roasted malts that we used in the beer, where these flavors had actually uh, diminished in a greater degree in the bulk aged beer than they had in the bottle. I did have my last bottle roughly a month ago, uh, and there was a very significant difference between the bottle conditioned beers and the bulk aged beers. It was very interesting because I thought they would actually be very similar, but guess not. The final gravity in the beers ended up being about 1022. Uh, so we ended up with a beer that's about 10 and a half percent ABV, very strong beer here, uh, but obviously that just made it much nicer uh, after having had a significant aging period. Uh, so this was a really, really cool experiment and definitely, definitely well worth the wait. Um, I'd like to do this type of thing again with another type of strong beer, either like a Belgian strong ale or maybe a barley wine, something to that degree. Uh, so that'll be next year's experiment. Yeah, so now we're gonna go ahead and get to pouring this. So I don't have any space in my kegerator left over, so it's sitting in my fridge right now with a picnic tap on it, so. We apologize for not having uh, the most uh, aesthetically appealing setup at the moment. So it's called Heart of Darkness after the Joseph Conrad novel. Clocks in at about 10.5% ABV and 82 IBUs. And it is a little heavily carbonated. So as I uh, explained earlier, it's definitely um, very heavily carbonated. Uh, that is because it is a bit fresh off of the forced carbonation cycle that I put in uh, over a couple days. But I did really have a very strong desire to drink this beer right now because it is my birthday today and uh, this is a very special beer and I feel like celebrating. So it's a bit heavily carbonated but please bear with me on that. Um, also I'm 99% sure there are other Russian Imperial Stouts out there named Heart of Darkness. I'm a home brewer, sorry. So appearances wise, we have an inky black beer with absolutely no transparency clarity whatsoever. I hold it up to the light and it blocks the light. <laughs> it's black as black can be. Um, and the head, which is actually sticking around for a really long time, is very thick, very bubbly. Um, and has a very much kind of chocolate frothy color to it. It's like a, kind of a dark tan, almost like a caramel color. Really beautiful um, going with the beer. In terms of aroma, get a, <laughs> get a very nice, strong, roasted dark chocolate aroma. It's almost like s'mores. Uh, a little bit of wood in there, a little bit of roast, smoke, um, and uh, some kind of nuttiness as well. Mm, maybe a, picking up maybe a slight hint of uh, fig aroma. Uh, and then the mouthfeel. Mouthfeel is um, sort of medium to uh, medium heavy. Um, it's very, I wouldn't say it's thick, uh, but it's kind of got this creamy, substantive mouthfeel. Very, very um, well suited for the style. Carbonation is uh, a bit strong, like I said. There is a slight carbonation bite to the beer, um, but the 
the flavor of the beer sticks around for a long time on your palate. It's not dry at all. It, it, it stays there. It is a very high finishing gravity, so it does have a bit of a residue um, in a good way. It's not syrupy thick, um, but it's definitely on the upper end of uh, the spectrum in terms of body of the beer. And now everyone's favorite part, mine included, flavor. The, uh, it's excellent. <laughs> it's, uh, this is a very, very complex beer. Uh, there are enormous amounts of flavor involved, um, and there's just a lot of different kinds of flavor that move through the palate, uh, and I am no sommelier, but, um, I certainly get a lot of flavors out of this. I get a lot of woody notes, and I think that's coming from the Northern Brewer hops that I use. They are known to throw somewhat wood-like uh, flavors, even though I did not age this on wood at all. Um, a lot of very strong dark roasted chocolate and dark roasted coffee, but the roast itself is actually subtle um, and somewhat subdued. Thank you, aging. <laughs> The acrid and sharp roasted flavors uh, that this used to have when it was young have now faded quite nicely. They are there to complement everything else. They don't take the show. They work well with everything. They're not going to get in the way. There's like a... There's like a dark fig in there too, like a dark fruit. Maybe not fig. I don't know. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure what that is. Um, it's not a yeast ester, and it might just kind of be my perception, but it's like a, this is a slight fruit in there. There's a little bit of bread crustiness, not, not a lot, really. Really, the main flavors of chocolate and coffee um, and, and, and roast. Caramel comes through pretty well as well. That might be what's creating that fig flavor I'm thinking of. It could just be a dark caramel kind of blending with some of the woody notes. Um, really quite delicious beer. Um, and like I said, it's 10.5%. It's nearly wine strength. It's, uh, it's definitely a dessert beer. It's a sipping beer. It's meant to be enjoyed after your meal while you're sitting on, you know, your sitting in your library next to a fireplace reading uh, one of the classic books. I don't know, maybe the book that this is named after. So I've brewed a lot of decent beers this year, some good ones, um, but this is easily the best one out of the entire year's worth of brewing. Um, easily a straight up 10 out of 10 for me. I know many of you don't know me, but I am a relatively self-critical and uh, somewhat perfectionist person. Uh, especially when it comes down to stuff like this. So I will very rarely give my beers, you know, a perfect score. But I cannot think of anything I would change about this recipe. I wouldn't change anything about the grain bill, about the hops I used, about the way I brewed it, about the way that I aged it. Absolutely nothing right now. And maybe that's just me being a little bit selfish. Maybe that's me being a little too proud. It's totally okay to call me out on that because I am just a home brewer, but it makes me happy. It'll definitely make other people happy. And uh, at the end of the day, that's kind of what we want, right? Uh, so I did actually end up doing a little bit of an experiment on this. So I, I said that I had six gallons, right? Well, there's only two gallons of the base beer in that keg. And the rest of it was split amongst four one gallon batches, which I now have sitting in four separate one gallon jugs, each with a different blend of uh, steeping ingredients. So I have, um, one that has dark cherries and some oak. I have a second one that has a uh, dried chipotle pepper, uh, some cacao nibs and some cinnamon. And I have a third one with some scotch and oak. And then the fourth one is uh, coffee and a vanilla bean. So hopefully all of those end up being good flavors that don't overpower the rest of the stout because I really won't, I don't want to ruin this beer. <laughs> But, you know, some of those are pretty strong, especially the oak. I'm going to make a whole separate video on uh, those particular results. Uh, so stay tuned for that. 
but this is a phenomenal beer and I'm really, really happy to have been able to share it with you. No, it was not my recipe. So this I did steal from somebody else online who won competitions with this beer. I can see why. So it, it, full disclaimer, yes, it is the best beer I've brewed. It's not my own recipe, uh, but that's fine. So stay tuned for that next video about the different adjuncts and the results that come from those. If you like this video and you like the beer tastings and the brew sessions and all of that stuff, uh, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. All of these things really help my channel become more relevant to YouTube, um, and I love talking with you all about stuff like this. So I put new videos up on YouTube every couple weeks or so, but I also have an Instagram. Feel free to follow me there. It's at the apartment brewer on Instagram, and I'll tend to post a little more frequently on Instagram every couple days. And it is real time, so you get to see what's going to be coming to the YouTube channel eventually. And uh, last but not least, I have included in the description box below the recipe for this beer, along with a compiled list of my equipment as of now. Uh, and links to Amazon where you can purchase these uh, things for yourself. If you do purchase something through one of those links, do know that I do earn a very small commission uh, if you choose to buy something. It's at no additional cost to you though, and it does help support the channel. I also appreciate all the support that's coming in from current subscribers, commenters, and all of you people uh, watching this and getting something out of it. So I hope you found it useful and enjoyed it. In the meantime, I'm going to be finishing off the rest of this lovely beer and maybe a little bit more, um, and I will catch you in the next one. So, cheers.